All right, so let's talk about matrices quickly. A matrix is a box of numbers. So much in the same way a vector is something like this. One, two, three, this is a vector. Recall, vectors exist. Are you all familiar with vectors? Smiling and nodding? Okay, good deal. Um, a matrix is like a vector. In fact, a vector is a kind of a matrix. Now, this is gonna get real wild for a second. Uh, let me just start with a case very simply of a matrix one, two, three, four. This is simply by example, right? So uh, this happens to be what is called a two by two matrix. Um, generally, this number is rows by columns. So this is a one by three matrix. All right, <laughs> sorry. I said rows by columns and then I wrote columns by rows. Three by one, rows by column. This is kind of crucial. Remember that. As you can see, I still have trouble keeping it straight. If you remember it's rows by columns, life will be much easier. Just put it in your head. I never did, and I really should have. Let, let this be a lesson. Okay, so I have this little box of numbers. And now the important thing is that this little box of numbers can act on vectors. So this is our very crucial fact. Uh, oops, sorry, not definition, a fact. There is a way for a matrix to be a function. Thinking of a matrix as a function is the point of this course. You have probably seen matrices before, is that correct? anyone disagreeing with me they've seen matrices before what did you see matrices doing before solving systems of equations yeah you're probably used to augmenting a matrix and then solving a system of equations in fact you are treating a matrix as a function in those cases you just didn't know it um so welcome to the day where we remove some of the lies yeah. And cover them with different lies. No. I mean, tell you the truth. It's all the truth, I promise. Okay, so let me show you how a matrix acts on a vector. So I'm going to take my little matrix one, two, three, four, and I'm going to apply it to a vector x, y. Okay. Now, there are two kind of crucial ways to see this. Um, the first way I'm going to write this down is the kind of old school, the thing you're probably used to doing. Uh, so this is a two by two matrix times a, how big is this thing? Two, two by, by one. one. Good. Okay, now the fact that these twos match means that this multiplication is valid. And I just said the word multiply. But I told you it was a function, right? Okay, so this is going to be one of the kind of crucial things about matrices. We're going to treat multiplication as do the function to. So you could think about this as if this is a matrix A and this is a vector X. I'm going to, in kind of multiplication thoughts, I'm going to write a x like this. In function thoughts,
I'm going to think A of X. You guys with me on that? The crucial linear algebra thing is that those are the same thing. You guys good with that? Okay, so in order to actually do this, one of the ways I can think about this is I can think about taking that x, y, I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to turn it sideways, and I'm going to drop it on to that 1, 2. And so I'm going to get 1 times x plus 2 times y. Okay, hot question. Do you guys recognize what kind of thing that is? That's a vector operation. What vector operation did I just do to the vector one, two and the vector x, y? We did dot product. Absolutely. That is row one dotted with X. What's going to go down here? Row two dot X. Perfect. So that's going to be three times X plus four times Y. You guys all see that? Okay. Now I'm going to rewrite that in a different way. I'm going to rewrite that as X times one, three plus Y times two, four. You guys all see that? Okay, and that is X1 times C1, or the column, plus X2, or the second component of X, times the second column. You guys with me on that? Why are these the same? So why is this, this row multiplication thing the same as this column multiplication? Thing? Like, why was I allowed to put this equal sign in the middle? I have a question about row by columns. Oh, about that just, this is just a labeling scheme. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, are we calling kite thing? Aren't columns vertical and rows are horizontal? Yeah. So isn't that a one by three? Rows, one, two, three rows, one column. Oh, got it, got it. This is exactly Okay, right. I was getting... I yeah. was getting confused by what we were calling columns. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it too much. That, like, that is perpetually confusing to me. Somehow it is the most confusing part of linear algebra. Uh, is just keeping straight which number is which. Okay, so really honestly, I'm a little bit out of time. What I need you to have is these two pictures. So you can either think of A times X. So if I have a matrix A, right, it's a box of numbers. You can either think about it as rows
right? Or you can think about it as columns. Uh, let's see. And so if this is N rows and M columns, this matrix is N by M, right? Row, number of rows by number of columns. You all with me on that? Okay. And if I'm going to take A n by m and multiply this by x by some vector, right? I have two options for how to do that. One is that I can make a column vector out of row one dotted with x, row two dotted with x, and so on, till I get to row n dotted with x. Is with me on that? So you can either take this thing and drop it on all the rows and do the dot product at each stage. That's one method. The other method you can use is that you can say that it's x1 times the first column plus x2 times the second column plus xm times the m column. You guys see that? Oops, no vector hat on that last thing. xm is a scalar, right? It's one of the components of that. So the green is what's called the row multiplication picture. And the pink is what's called the column multiplication picture. And sometimes one or the other is advantageous for solving a problem. It helps to know that they're both available. Um, in our problem number 29 that we did a minute ago in 1.1, we were really looking at that kind of column multiplication picture, right? Because we had some factors that we were like taking scalar multiples of and adding together. We could go back and think about that problem in terms of the column multiplication picture for a minute. Um, I would encourage you to do that. Um, if you haven't solved that problem yet, check out the stuff at the beginning of chapter 1.3 or section 1.3, and then go look at problem 1.1 uh, number 29. Oops. There is something interesting to be had there. Cool. All right. Um, I'm out of time for this. Do you guys have any questions on this? This probably made uh, not the greatest deal of sense because you haven't seen this before. Is that roughly accurate? Okay. Um, yeah, if we have to talk about more things in there, which I probably expect we will, um, we'll do that. It's okay. All right. Um, so you should be able to get started on the 1.3 homework with just this as an idea. Um, so you guys got this. Go ye forth.